humble mind. Today, I wanted to take some time to get a little more personal with you guys. Earlier this year, my younger brother passed away unexpectedly. He was young, too. He would have been 25 this year. Ever since then, I've been working on honoring him in my own creative ways, but as you could probably assume, it's been extremely difficult to write and talk about this. Today's video is a bit of a baby step in that direction. One day, I plan on making a big video telling you all about our gaming memories growing up and, most importantly, who he was as a person. But for now, this is how I want to begin sharing these things as part of my own healing process and because it's a way to continue keeping his story alive. But first, a bit about why I'm choosing to do a video tribute instead of doing this through another medium. I've always had two big passions or hobbies I guess you could say in life. The first is music and the second is gaming. Over the years I've played in many bands, I've written and recorded a lot of songs and played shows, and I'm pretty decent on the guitar. But this is all to say that around 2023 I noticed a bit of a shift where I was getting burnt out on music and so I started embracing gaming a whole lot more instead. That's what led to the creation of this channel, and it's been my main creative focus for a while now. And this all happened because, while my favorite thing to do in music is write songs and specifically write lyrics, I realized that oftentimes when I write, I would be bringing up all these deeply personal things in a creative way and sort of forcing myself to confront whatever I'm dealing with emotionally. While I think that's definitely a good and healthy thing most of the time, it can sometimes take its toll on you because you're being so direct with yourself about things that are often difficult to bring to the surface. Meanwhile, with video games, I found a sort of escapism that I guess I was unknowingly longing for, and I rediscovered my passion for video games again through the lens of Ryo Hazuki and Shinmu, as Alice and Fantasy Star, or as Link in A Link to the Past, among many others. And I found that while I helped them solve their problems, I could forget about mine for a time and sometimes even work some stuff out subconsciously while enjoying getting lost in someone else's world. So over 2023, I started writing more about games and that eventually turned into Humble Mud. My brother passed away only a few days after I released my very first video. He gave me some awesome, focused, and supportive feedback in private the day my video released, nothing short of what I would have expected from him. And I felt like he was proud of me and he was proud of that video. While it would have been easy and understandable to drop everything after his passing because it was just all too much, I thankfully already had my Excite Truck video done and scheduled at that time and I made a vow to myself that I'd continue going with this. Creating music can be a release for sure, but at the time everything was too raw for that. However, over time I've learned that having something creative going on at all times is critical for my mental health. And I also feel as if I'm living for both of us now, not just myself anymore, so I need to continue on as best as I can. And thankfully, as time passed, I found that Humble Mud was helping me. I enjoy the process of making videos, of researching games, of lining the footage up just right between the cuts so it all looks smooth, getting the right song to complement whatever I'm talking about and transitioning between songs from different games. And then of course playing the games themselves is such a treat. There are so many games I'm exposing myself to nowadays, it's easy to stay busy and to stay distracted. But another thing I learned over this year is that games can help you deal with big real life problems in a healthy way too. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink was the first game I saw online after my brother's passing that made me feel anything, really. Nothing else was exciting at the time. While I was away with the family dealing with things, I had Grand Blue waiting for me when I got back to my PlayStation. I knew it was important to have something to look forward to. I couldn't just sit in my house filled with ennui and disinterest. Once I started playing the game myself for the first time, there was one character in particular that caught me off guard, and that's Roland. I hadn't seen him yet in any of the footage that I watched beforehand, and he really got to me because he looks like my brother. Now, I'm not going to show any pictures of my brother right now, but when he was in high school, he had a really similar haircut to Roland. He wore glasses, and he even bears a similar name, Devin. My brother also became quite the handyman in his 20s, and what do they call Roland in this game? Mr. Fix-It, because he can fix anything. So as you can imagine, I grew a special fondness towards Roland in particular, and so I saw his adventure through until the end. So after that, in between some of the other videos that I was making, and as I felt comfortable, I started trying to find my brother in other games. The next one I really got into was Mother 3. Had it ever been officially released over here in the States, I'm sure this would have been named Earthbound 2, but this is essentially the game that Lucas from Super Smash Bros. comes from, if you're not familiar. When my brother was in middle school, he had his hair spiked up just like Lucas, and oddly enough, 
Lucas is one of the characters that he would often play as in Super Smash Bros. to compliment me. My main was Ness. He literally learned how to play Lucas so that we could be the Earthbound Brothers together. Outside of this though, I also gravitated towards this game because I know it's a game about loss. It's also a tale about two brothers, and coincidentally, I looked an awful lot like Lucas's older brother Claus when I was younger. My brother, the younger blonde boy, and me, the older redhead. Now, for those of you who know the ending of this game, you might be a little worried for me, but remember, my brother looked like Lucas, so my brother was the hero of the story. The ending of this game didn't bother me like it would have had things been the other way around. And so I saw the adventure through Mother 3 until the end as well. While playing this game, I watched Lucas grow up and deal with things. I watched him get stronger and more worldly. I watched him deal with very human problems just like my brother did in real life. I watched him take on new challenges, and I watched him learn how to do things that inspired people as he grew out of his shell, just like my brother did. And with both of these games, I realized that part of the reason they made me feel the things I did was because they allowed me to feel like my brother was there with me. Obviously, I know the difference between Roland or Lucas and Devin, but seeing these two as my brother during my playthrough certainly made these adventures feel more special. There are other games I intend to try too as I get the courage or whenever the time feels right as well. Spiritfarer, for example, is one of those games that I know deals with grief specifically, and I'm sure it will be something that proves helpful to me in the future. There are games from my past that I may revisit one day, featuring characters who remind me of my brother. For example, Earthbound has Jeff, who for sure reminds me of Devin as well. And maybe I'll learn something else about myself or this game upon revisiting it with this lens. On that note, certain games that I have revisited, ones that carry a lot of memories of me and my brother, they've taught me something else especially powerful about video games. And this is a thing that you really can only experience through them and no other medium. Years from now, if I ever feel like I want to be a little closer to him, if I find myself missing my brother, it would make sense that maybe I'd want to go to some of his favorite places, eat some food that he loved, or travel to a location that takes me back to our childhood. The problem that can come with this though is that with time, the restaurant that makes his favorite wings or his favorite burgers, it might not be around anymore. The places we went together as kids and young adults may be repurposed, torn down, or changed in some way that makes them not feel the same. I already live several hours away from where we grew up, so it's not really feasible to make a trip like that on a whim for just a moment of solace that I might need right now. I could watch some of our favorite shows like King of the Hill, which has spawned so many inside jokes for us, but doing that would just give me respite for a moment. A clip, a joke, a gag, they help, but these aren't places I can go that would make me feel connected to him, that would give me peace. I think it would be really helpful to have places that allow me to stay there for a moment at my leisure to remember him or our memories. And something that I discovered is that an underrated aspect of video games that sets them apart from any other medium is that their interactivity allows you to be a tourist in another world at a moment's convenience. You can stay there. You can ignore the rules and confines of the game and do whatever you want and need in that moment. Right now, I can boot up Super Mario 64, probably his all-time favorite game, and I can stay in Peach's courtyard all day if I wanted to. Whether I just have the game on in the background for comfort, or I choose to have some lunch while Mario naps, I can be there and I can be there for as long as I want. I can be there and think about the first time I introduced Evan to that game and how he stayed there running around the courtyard for so long that he almost forgot there was a whole castle in front of him to explore. I can go to the Dark Hollow in Spyro the Dragon, which was the very first game he ever played, and remember how when we first saw this game on the PS1, the game looked like this to us. And I can just bask in how peaceful this area is and the music that it has while I think about the first time he ever held a controller and tried to mimic what he saw his older brother do. I can find some otherwise insignificant spot in Halo and just stare out over the clouds and think about all of the death matches and adventures that we went on together. And I can take him to places he's never been as well, places new and old that I think he would have liked, like the Pioneer 2 in Fantasy Star Online, or my ship in Helldivers 2, Helldivers 2 actually being a game I bought for him and I on his first posthumous birthday. Places we went to as kids and have lots of memories of may be soon replaced by apartment buildings or simply just not be feasible enough to go to visit right now. We didn't always see eye to eye on music, he wasn't much of a reader, and a quote from a movie or show can only capture so much of the reality surrounding it. But I can go to Peach's castle or the artisan world and I can see the rings of Halo at pretty much any time and just be there, as long as I need to. I don't know how much time I'll need to do things like this, but they will be here for me just as they always were, for as long as it takes. And I think there's something very special about that. 
I love my brother, and the ability to be able to go to some of our favorite places that we visited together all of those years ago at any time is an unexpected blessing within video games that I never thought about or thought I would need, but I'm certainly thankful that I can. Some days are really hard, but these places help make those days a little less difficult. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble. <laughs>